book had its beginnings in a walk that Sadhguru and I once took. We were walking around the ashram, I remember. I think it was sometime in 2006. And I mentioned to him that it was a pity that there wasn't any real chronicle of his life available. And it seems like such an extraordinary life. The big question before me constantly was, how do you archive a mystic? How do you document a yogi? I see myself really largely as a listener. And this seemed like a huge opportunity to listen to someone whom I find fascinating, and I think many others will as well. So I think a lot of the time subsequently was just spent on long conversations. And somewhere through those, the outline of a book began to emerge. And that's how the book took shape. It's the portrait of a man who's this flamboyant, exuberant, remarkably compassionate, but absolutely unpredictable figure whom we know as Sadhguru. And it's an attempt to offer some glimpse of the man with all the facets and paradoxes that make up the person. On the one hand, there is this warm, friendly, funny, irreverent, provocative, endearingly human person whom we, many of us, know. And on the other hand, there is this remote, inscrutable, enigmatic, larger-than-life, mystic yogi and guru. So the book is an attempt to probe to find one's way through those paradoxes and contradictions. It's about a man who's just perhaps the most incredibly alive human being I know. I think what's inspirational about Sadhguru's life journey, which is what we attempt to present in the book, is the fact that he starts out a skeptic. And it's a journey from a skeptic to a spiritual guide from a wild motorcyclist in my soul to a mystic, from an agnostic to a guru. So that's the journey that the book tries to present. It's a trajectory of his life from his early years to the present moment. On the one hand, he's capable of being incredibly rational, very commonsensical, so reasonable that you can end up believing that this is all there is to the person. And then there's the other side of him, which I see really as the side that's the poet, mystic. And that part of him may strain the limits of your credulity at times, but I don't have a problem with that. It intrigues me, it fascinates me. And in some ways, that's part of the book too. One of the things that always strikes one about Sadhguru, which is something I discovered more and more of while writing this book, is his ability to lead a completely unguarded life. It's just this incredible vulnerability that he just allows you to see, and he allows everyone to see. It's a reminder that one doesn't need any of the trappings of holiness or piety to know yourself. The fact that this is a man who seems to pack the the urgency and the voltage of several lifetimes into a single one. You don't need any kind of religious or sectarian affiliation. You don't need any kind of scriptural knowledge to arrive at that moment of spiritual breakthrough. If it can happen to him, it can happen to you and to me. I think that's the reminder that the book offers. So it is more than a life in more ways than one. biography. I'm still not done with life. <laughs>